Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in you. Welcome to Our Region's Business with your host, Bill Flanagan. Today on Our Region's Business, a taste of a brewing tradition that's in its fifth generation in our region, the story of Straw Brewery, plus the ticket to great entertainment here in our region through the holidays and beyond. We'll peek behind the curtain at the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust. But first, tell the kids it's time to pay attention to a business show, at least this one time on this one day. We're about to show you the real science behind Big Hero 6 the Disney animated picture that's been one of the big hits of the early holiday season. Hello, I am Baymax. Tadashi programmed me to heal the sick and injured. You will be all right. There, there. In case you may have missed it, the movie tells the story of a teenage boy who befriends an inflatable robot. The story is fiction, but the technology is actually based on reality, and it's something the movie makers spotted at a lab right here in our region. So a man in a kabuki mask attacked you in Balloon Man. Chris Atkinson is professor of robotics at Carnegie Mellon University. Young Lay Park is assistant professor of robotics at CMU. And Carmel Majidi is Assistant Professor of Mechanical Engineering. And welcome. Good to have all three of you here with all your good. props and all this fun stuff. This is good great. Good to be here. Yeah. Well, tell, first a little bit, and I want to get into the science and the technology and what you're doing. But first off, how did a, a, a robot in a lab at CMU wind up on the big screen? Well, a lot of people don't realize that Disney does actual research. Uh, for the movie Frozen, for example, they had to send a bunch of animators from California who'd never seen snow to Norway so they could play in the snow and they filmed it all and that's what ended up being the movie Frozen. For this movie, they knew they wanted to do robotics, but they, did, they didn't want a Transformer or a Terminator. So instead, they called up a part of Disney called Disney Research. And here in Pittsburgh, we have one of the lead Disney Research Labs, Disney Research Pittsburgh. So the director and some other people from the movie came to visit Disney Research Pittsburgh, and they asked Disney Research Pittsburgh, introduce us to cool stuff happening at Carnegie Mellon and also around the world. So they went to MIT and Harvard and actually a bunch of universities in Japan. So if you look at, at the credits of the movie, you'll see where they went on their grand tour. Okay, all kinds of, but what they found at, at CMU was at least part of what, uh, of, of an inflatable robot, right? That's right. Uh for a long time, uh, we've been interested in robots that can help people. And in fact, about 11 years ago, we introduced a robot called Nurse Butt on the Today Show. I think it was Katie Couric uh, introduced it to I the world. I remember that, right, yeah. And uh, here we are, much later. Uh, we're still working on getting robots to help people, for example, help people live independently in their own homes as long as possible. I'm really worried that the standard robot is going to end up killing somebody. Hmm. And that basically is going to shut down a lot of robotics. Big, research. heavy metal machine. Uh, what I call a metal monster. Yeah. So I've been thinking really hard about ways to avoid that kind of tragedy. And one way to do it is to make the robot really light. And one way to do that is to make it inflatable, like an inflatable toy, uh, something like one of these things. So Young Life, clearly you've gotten attracted and excited by this, this line, line of research. Why? What do you think? So I think future robots will be more interactive with people and then future robots will be home, not like industrial areas. So they're going to be something you'll have in your house, helping to take care of yes. you and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, robots are not really independent from pe people and humans, so we can wear the robot in the future. So pe uh, robots can help people's moving and also some uh, other jobs. So if it's inflatable, if it's made of plastic like Baymax, and that was the big robot in the movie, just uh, it's a safer machine to be around and potentially one you're more comfortable being around. Right, yeah, more human friendly and more human safe. Yeah, a lot, of a lot of challenges to resolve this. For one thing, you don't want the robot to burst, I guess. If you're, What are some of the things on the material side you've really had to grapple with to begin to think about this? Right, I mean, and, and part of what makes this a, a you know, fun area to work in is that there's a lot of materials challenges. I mean, when you think about you know, the, the kind of the, these metal monsters, I mean, they're pretty much, you know, heavy duty machines. I mean, 
Do you know they're made out of you know steel, like right. you know, the classic hard. Pittsburgh material. Yeah, there right. you go. Yeah. I mean, and this is how machines are built today. Um, you know, the metals, uh, hard plastics, um, and so nowhere is similar to the types of uh, materials that you know make up. Um, you know us, for example. Um, so if we want to, uh, you know, make these machines, uh, engineer them to be kind of a little bit more similar to the way that you know we're kind of uh, built, uh, we really have to, to kind of think about, kind of reconsider the types of materials that we use. So instead of making uh, materials that, uh, or machines out of uh, hard uh, uh, metals, uh, instead we're looking at rubbers and, and fluids. Hmm. And so something like just like a, just a stretchy rubber would be perfect uh, for for making a uh, oh, something that's wearable, uh, a machine or or a big inflatable robot. We have a lot of science and computer science and technology then to get one of these machines to work to make the whole system function, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, one of the, my areas is making soft sensors and soft actuators. In soft sensors, we make very thin uh, silicon layers, which is really structural and flexible. And then in that layer, we have micro channels embedded inside. And then uh, we fill the micro channel with liquid metal. So this is one example of the sensor. So you have the silicon rubber, and then that has a liquid metal inside. Okay, so the metal sort of embedded inside the silicon or the soft. Or the right. So then the material is really stretchable, but still it maintains the conductivity. So now when you stretch or flex or compress, uh, it changes electrical resistance. So then you can detect that, that resistance change. Then imagine you wear this device on your uh, bodies and then you move around and then you can detect how much you're moving and if you bump into something and then you can detect it. So and on the robot side if it's smart enough it could use those same technologies to understand how hard it's pushing and pressing and touching and everything sure, as yeah. well, mm -hmm. right? So this robot skin could be sensitive, it could feel that. Right, right. now it doesn't feel anything. That which then makes the robot potentially more empathic and able to relate to people in a really direct, natural way, which you would could, be impossible today. You could safely hug it. Yeah, safely <laughs> hug the robot and be hugged by the robot. Well, you think this is a great opportunity for Pittsburgh if you guys can sort this out and come up with these systems that work the way they do in the movie? So 150 years ago, Pittsburgh was the richest city on earth because they made hard stuff, steel. Uh, I think we can you know, do that again, but this time around, uh, we'd have to be leaders in materials and soft materials and also putting systems together. And I, th I, th I think we have both of those ingredients. We have Bayer uh, Material Sciences, for example, as an example of a materials company. And we have a lot of people coming out of CMU and the University of Pittsburgh who are experts at, at putting systems together. And I think if we combine those two things, we can make a, basically a whole new generation of technology. Well, it's exciting stuff. And I know I only a few seconds left, but it, you're doing an unusual way to approach this research, actually hoping to use some crowdfunding to support what you're doing. So if people do want to find out more and really help, help you guys make this future happen, how do they do that? How do they find you? So we put together a website that would allow people to donate if you like the movie or you think uh, you know, Huggable Robots is a good future to have. The URL is buildbaymax.org. All right. Well, people can go there, find out more, and of course, see the movie. It's the holidays. Everybody does it. The movie's called Big Hero 6. The innovation's coming out of our region. Chris Atkinson, Young Lay Park, and Carmel Majidi from CMU's Robotics Institute. Thank you all so much. Appreciate yeah, it. A lot. That Thank was you. A lot of fun. Chris, Thank you. Too. Next up, from screen to stage, the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust's holiday lineup. Stay with us.